Welcome back, everyone, to a new episode of Virtual Coffee. My name is Alexa Collier, and on this podcast, I chat with small business owners where we discuss their perspectives, their ideas, advice, etc. And sometimes I do solo episodes to share what's been on my mind. Now, with me today is Taylor, the founder and owner of Positivity Designs. Taylor is located here in the Raleigh area, and she sells hand-designed pet portrait apparel, customizable bandanas for your pets, decals, bags, and other accessories. Her stuff is really cute and really well designed, um, and she is a true dog and animal lover, which I love, um, and I especially love showcasing a small business like Positivity Designs that gives back to rescues and shelters. Now, before we jump in and hear from Taylor, as always, I'd appreciate it if you could rate and review Virtual Coffee on the Apple Podcasts app and on Spotify. Helps others discover us and also discover the small businesses that we feature. You can also follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the socials. It's all at Virtual Coffee Podcast. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. I know you'll enjoy this episode, so let's dive in and hear from Taylor. Welcome, Taylor. Thank you so much for being on Virtual Coffee today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Of course. Yeah, let's dive into it. So tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your business. Just get us started here and then we'll we'll go from there. Um, well, my name is Taylor. I am the owner and operator of Positivity Designs. I'm originally from New Jersey, but <laughs> I have relocated, you know, to Garner. My two dogs are the reason behind my business. I rescued them while I was in college off the side of the road. Aww. And um, my whole career has pretty much been based around dogs. After I graduated college, I worked for the American Kennel Club in Manhattan and immersed my life into everything rescue dogs and just dogs in general. Yay, that's awesome. Yay for New Jersey and yay for rescue dogs. Um, yes. <laughs> we we also rescued our two dogs and I'm huge, huge promoter of rescuing. Um, so that's that's wonderful to hear. Before kind of diving into the specifics of your business, I want to dive into your background. So what did you go to school for? Was it, you know, related to your business, something completely different? Did you just kind of discover, you know, your path to this business, like through your passion for dogs and rescuing? It sounds like yes. But what was your, I guess your background? You know, some people have a very specific skill set that they transfer to the business that they own. And some people go the complete opposite and just follow their passion. So what was your, your path? I changed my major like six times in college <laughs> and I ended up graduating with a communication degree um, in public relations. Okay. And while I was in college uh, the last year, actually, I was working at a small boutique in the area mm-hmm. and they had all the machines that I currently use. So like, well, they had a silhouette, a cricket, a heat press, the vinyl, all, all of it. And I was so like, wow, I can make anything I want. Like, this is really cool. So when I graduated, I had gotten a job with American Kennel Club for social media. So I was kind of already like in that realm with school and everything. And then, you know, once I was working for AKC, like one Christmas, I was like, I just really want a cricket. Like, please, someone get it for me. And my uncle did. And I was like, well, now I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this. Like, there's such a wide range of opportunity. I've always been passionate about animals in general my whole life. But just being in the company and seeing how much, you know, rescues really needed a voice for them. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait a minute, this could this could work. And then I actually went shopping and I got this little water mat for my dog's water bowl and it said stay positive on it. And it just like, I was just standing in my kitchen and it just like clicked in my head. And I was like, that's what my business name is going to be. And I'm going to do stuff for dogs. I want to help rescues. I just want to do the whole nine yards. So I kind of like kind of mixed everything in from college to start my business And it was like easy because I had the background of like knowing how to make everything already. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, 
in the social media part of what my career started as definitely helped, you know, launch my business. Um, so yeah, I kind of just took everything and put it all together. <laughs> That's neat. And I think you highlight a good point that really a business encompasses so many skill sets. So almost yeah. anything you have, either whether it's from college or just experience, you can transfer somehow into running yeah. your own business, right? Like, yeah, to your point, kind of even your social media experience, um, mm-hmm. like that's huge <laughs> for, for yeah. small business. Getting into some, you know, some of the products you sell, do you actually draw anything out? Like, have you always been artsy or do you do a different route where you don't actually need to draw the things out? It's a little bit of everything. Like I just, okay. you know, random fonts I'll pull from the internet and what use those. Um, but I kind of always had a creative background. My mom is actually a graphic designer. And so in college, when I switched around majors, yeah. I took a bunch of photography classes, Photoshop classes. Like I just kind of wanted to immerse myself into that because I knew I wanted to go into some type of communication field and social media so I knew I had to have that creativity behind me and also I just in my regular life like crafting things too Mm -hmm. so I do draw like the portraits that I self and then I will spend hours on end just kind of making 20 mock-ups of a design idea that I have and I'll kind of narrow them down from there but yeah so everything I would say it's a good good mix of things that I draw and then obviously some help from the internet. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That's neat. Yeah. Definitely sounds like you do have that kind of artistic background and are able to leverage that for positivity designs. Is this your full-time job? Were you able to make positivity designs full-time or is it still kind of, I don't want to say side business because that's not the right wording, but is it in addition to another job? Um, so it was when I was working at AKC um, okay. up in the city. So we kind of had a mutual parting, I would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I, I didn't have anything else besides positivity. And I kind of just took all the time that I had during the day that I would usually spend wor- like working nine to five, just putting all my attention and energy into positivity and making oh. it what it is today. Um, so right now I, it is full time. I'm starting wow. to plan events. Um, I do some like dog walking on the side, but I also do that specifically to like get my name out there too. Yeah. And then all the dogs that I get to walk, I use them as models for my store. <laughs> that's awesome. I yeah. love that. <laughs> that's a neat <laughs> idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's really cool. Congratulations taking it full time. I mean, that's a huge, huge step. Um, any, advice there or reflections of taking it full time like you know sometimes I think oh what I could do with this podcast if I took it full time which right now that's just not not in the plans for me but there is something about that right being able to dedicate all of that time that you would spend working at maybe more of a corporate job to to your passion so any advice or, or reflections on that how that went I used to joke like finding a job in general, I feel like is a full-time job because you spend Mm -hmm. hours and hours searching all these links, doing research on the company and filling out applications and stuff. And I'd kind of gotten a little let down from my options. Mm -hmm. And when I was like, you know what, I'm spending all this time applying for jobs. Like, why don't I just do my own thing? And I would say like at the time it was more like 2019. I mean, it, what, there wasn't a lot of pet boutiques out there. Like, I think that's when that everything had just kind of started. And yeah. so I was like, I just got to, I got to dive in. I got to give this my time. I will say it was very stressful. Thankfully had a lot of support on my end, my boyfriend, my family, like everyone was like, you can do this. Like you love animals. You love designing things like you can do this. And, you know, it was slow at first, but then it started to pick up and I was like, whoa maybe I can do this. So I I would say like the biggest thing I've taken away from it is like the support and like self-confidence that you need to have to just push through. I mean, there's going to be days where you're like, why am I doing this? You know, this is stressful. Like maybe, you know, money wise, it's not doing well right now. Or, you know, I had a bad market or something, but then, you know, on the really good days or when I, you like, for me, I landed my first event. I was like, 
this is exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just have to, I just got to keep pushing. That's like the biggest thing I can say. No, I think that's great, great advice and a great perspective. And that feeling of the highs are so high and the lows can be so low. I think everyone can yeah. relate to that. And to your point, it's just pushing through the lows to get to get to the next yeah. high and, and to really stay consistent. That sounds like the key of just keep going. And if you you know that you're passionate about it and want to do this thing, like just keep going, yeah. keep trying. I'm sure people get to a point where, yeah, it's it's no longer realistic to do it full time or something, but you got to keep trying, right? Unless you're actually at that point, why, why stop? Why, yeah. why not keep going? Well, yeah. like you said too, the passion part is also mm-hmm. really important because there has been a few times where I've like, hmm, maybe I can do this too. And I just wasn't passionate about it. I wasn't going to give it the yeah. attention that it needed, but I'm so passionate about what I do and like the animals that I see and rest, help rescue and stuff like that. So the passion has to be there or it won't work. Yeah, I totally agree. And I also like how your business came up naturally in the sense that you already had a passion for dogs rescuing, like in this topic or area, right? You were already <laughs> passionate about it. It's not like you were trying to force something onto yourself that that just wasn't a match. Your your life kind of led you to this and you were able to take that opportunity and and build the business. Yeah. Want to dive into yeah. more of the the products that you actually sell. So, of course, don't have to describe every single one of them, but for <laughs> audience members who are listening and are might be unfamiliar with Positivity Designs, what are some of the things you sell and create? So, we started or I started. I say we a lot for my business mm-hmm. because I do <laughs> yeah. have some lovely volunteers nice. <laughs> every now and then. <laughs> if I have so many orders. I have my cousin that will come help. I have, you know, some of my close friends and then my boyfriend gets lumped into it too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I started with just dog bandanas because okay. at the time it was most financially applicable option. So I started with the dog bandanas and then I slowly added like car decals and stuff like that. And then I finally figured out how to do pet portraits where they mm-hmm. weren't like crazy to do and take up too much time so then I finally launched portrait sweatshirts and decals for the cars with those two and I do bags cups koozies pretty much if you want your dog's face on it I can put it on there (laughs) (laughs) your products are very very cute and I like I like your portrait ones because they're not like, I like how you sketch them out. It's more like the line, kind of like detailed yeah. line drawings. And I, I yeah. like that style a lot. Thank you. When I was testing them, like yeah. I said, like they were getting a little too complicated if I didn't just do the line sketching. Mm. And when I showed some previews, everyone was like, ooh, I like those. Those are simple. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. It's like from a from my perspective, I feel like you're able to wear your dog's face without it being like obnoxious. You know, it's not like a photo of your dog (laughs) plastered on your, your sweatshirt. So yeah, Yeah. they're, they're awesome. I'm always interested in how business owners take that first step of even take the, the sweatshirts, for example, like how did you even know or figure out how to get the sweatshirts? Like, was it a huge upfront cost? Were you freaking out? Like, what was that? who were those feelings like what was that process like or do you just google it and figure it out I don't know does that does that make sense when I'm trying to get it so I had always been looking into options to do screen printing Mm -hmm. and stuff like that Um, right now I just have vinyl but my boyfriend's dad works for a small company in Massachusetts that does like t-shirt printing and design so I talked to him a little bit Um, I always got ads because it was what I was searching for. So I would just check out websites, read reviews. Um, I will say the day I decided to order everything, I was like freaking out because it it was like $500 worth of supplies. And I was like, I don't even know if these are going to sell. And like this was during COVID too. So I was like, nothing is promised tomorrow financially or business wise or lockdown wise, whatever it was. So I, I was like, I hope this works. And yeah, I just kind of bit the bullet and went in 
bought everything. And then as soon as I introduced everything, I got such a good feedback from everyone. And I was like, okay, like this could work. And I also was putting into perspective, like I would say I'm a crazy dog mom and I love <laughs> my dogs and they are, they mean everything to me, but I, I would say it's more of a tasteful <laughs> obsession. Like you said, if I just had pictures of my dogs plastered everywhere, I feel like it would be like a little over the top, but like with <laughs> what I do, I'm like, I want to wear this out. I could wear this, you know, to the gym, out grocery shopping, whatever. People are going to be like, oh, she loves her dogs, but it's not like I've seen people with like the phone cases to just right. have the dog's face on it. But yeah, so it's kind of a mix between what would I want to wear and what would I want to see people wearing out? And I just knew in general loungewear, especially with COVID, loungewear was what everyone was wearing. Everyone was at home. So I was like, let's just take it comfortable first. And so I did the sweatshirts and the t-shirts and it was honestly the best decision I ever made because I said I don't want to stop selling bandanas, but I definitely have moved more towards the apparel side with the portraits and stuff. But yeah, I just, I had to do it. <laughs> I appreciate you sharing that because I think it's easy, especially even on this podcast, right? We often talk about the outcome or the result, but I think people forget like you as the business owner do have to put in all your money up front, like even just buying those those sweatshirts to print on and you're, you take yeah. that risk, you take that leap. And I can imagine that's really scary because, yeah, for some people it doesn't work out and for some people it it does. And there is a little bit of a, a lot of bit of risk there. <laughs> and, right. Yeah. And it's, I don't think people often discuss that because it's, of course, much easier to talk about the the outcome and the result. But I, I appreciate you sharing that, just giving some insight into the the behind the scenes yeah I always find it it's inspiring every time I talk to someone who started their own business of just like wow like you you had the guts to do it and I just I think that's <laughs> awesome it's very very inspiring thank you yeah the first when I hit that order button I was like oh yeah work. <laughs> yeah yeah no it's yeah it's it's great I I love that you kept with it and are continuing with it one kind of logistical question I just want to make sure I ask, uh, where do you ship? Are you able to ship within the United States, internationally? Kind of what are your boundaries? I would say right now I just ship in the U.S. and all the okay. U.S. territories. I have officially shipped to every state and two territories. Wow. Which is like a huge accomplishment. I have like a little map <laughs> like yeah. that I get to draw in every time I send an order. But, but yeah, so for right now, just because cost-wise, shipping is expensive and I have uh, a close friend of mine who's married to a man from Australia and just talking to her about getting care packages from home mm. and customs like going through everything and I just have been scared to like kind of go out of the U.S. just because I because I ship on Etsy right now and Etsy helps and does such a great job of just giving me an easy option to buy a label and I have opportunities to ship outside of the U.S. through Etsy too but I just think for right now I don't want customs ripping through my cute packaging and you know potentially yeah. staining a sweatshirt you know because then I got to start that process all over again so I think once I'm more comfortable and have like a better idea maybe I'll dabble in but also I want to kind of stay in the U.S. just because I want to eventually like travel and do some vendor shows and stuff okay. like I've done I've done shows in New Jersey and in North Carolina but I would like to you know make relationships with people within the country because they would obviously just be so much more efficient if I could you know maybe drive to Virginia or South Carolina right. and do a show or something like that so yeah, that makes sense. And congratulations on all the states. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's really cool. And diving into some of those markets a little bit, any local ones that that you're consistently at? Or um, I know a lot of our listeners are from the Raleigh area, just because that's where I'm located as well. Any like markets you want to shout out that people can find you at? Um, or can they find that on your Instagram? Um, so I always post the events that we'll be at on Instagram. But I mainly stick to breweries from there the most dog friendly options um, yeah that's true I, mean, <laughs> I love I love a good craft beer so 
But yeah, mainly breweries. So I am in Deep River um, in Clayton a lot. That's where when I moved back down here, that's where I started my shows. I do a lot of shows at Oak City Brewing in Nightdale. I've done Freckled Honeys Market in Cary. I'm trying to expand down near Fayetteville, Hope Mills area mm-hmm. too. I know there's some good breweries down there that I've been chatting with and they have specifically like dog day markets. So I think that would be okay. good for me. Um, but I like the breweries because yeah, like a lot of the people I've met that do markets and stuff, they do markets all over the place. But like, I like the brewery because people come with their dogs anyway. And if they just happen to find me, I ended up making like some of the greatest relationships with some of my customers just because they were like, oh my God, we didn't even know there was going to be a market today. But like, you're Mm -hmm. here, we brought our dog and you know, and they always, the first thing they say, you can put my dog's face on that. I'm like, yep, (laughs) I can. Um, And I just, I like the atmosphere of breweries. I feel like not a crazy bar scene where Mm -hmm. you know there could be problems I feel like it's very family oriented and you know more relaxed than anything that's a good idea to go to the breweries like you said dog friendly that makes total Mm -hmm. sense and then also to your point people likely are just showing up for like food and drink right and then you happen to be there it's like markets sometimes people go for the market and if you have another vendor who's selling something similar or I don't know I could imagine if you get the the wrong spot like in the lot you know it can be kind yeah. of complicated or a little bit luck of the draw but I, the brewery thing I like that that makes sense yeah. that's a nice there uh, have been some markets for me that I'm like I am never coming back because like you yeah said, like, I had a I had a bad spot and like that's not my fault that's not their fault right. they made the right. map you know the day before but it was just like I just spent five hours here Yeah, I could have been working or doing something else. So I'm very, that's why I stick to the breweries unless the market is also like dog based. Mm-hmm. So I know I'll have somewhat of a good turnout. Yeah. I think that's actually a good piece of advice for other business owners of just even just doing your research on the market scene. Cause I think it's probably easy to just assume, Oh, I'm a small business owner. I should go to markets, but yeah. Maybe just maybe just think about that like what other options might be. Maybe that is the best option for someone, but don't just automatically assume it's it's the best. Yeah. Interested in knowing where you're hoping to take positivity designs both from the the business perspective and personal perspective. It sounds like you're very focused on it right now. Is that the plan for for the future? Um do you have any big business goals you want to achieve? Just kind of telling us where where your head's at for the future long term goal I would say I would love to have a brick and mortar property to mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it would just be the store if it would be something else too but I've always just imagined seeing positivity on the front of a building and with a cute sign and paw prints yeah. uh, so that's like way way down the line but for right now I just want to keep doing what I'm doing I'm also working on building my own website to officially get off of Etsy soon. So I'm working on that. I am going to keep doing markets. I'm actually planning my first event um, at Deep River. It's called Woofstock um, and it'll be on August 13th. So I'm setting up the entire event. There's going to be rescues there, food trucks, live music, a bunch of dog vendors and just a day of beer dogs and you know a bunch of love so Mm -hmm. I want to keep doing that and I have a good feeling about this event there's been a lot of good feedback on the promotion stuff so I think it'll just be a good day and if it works and takes off from there hopefully I can do some other dog events at different breweries and stuff like that but right now I just want to stick with what I'm doing oh and I do I would say I want to get more involved with the rescues around here there's Mm -hmm. a few that I consistently donate to but I would love to just get out there because even with planning Wolfstock, a couple of the rescues I reached out to were like we would love to come but unfortunately we just don't have volunteers to help with a booth we don't have enough for that weekend or you know we're short staffed and that just breaks my heart because I'm like 
I can only imagine, you know, all these dogs, like I know how shelters work, but I would, I love when I see people, I'm just going to go walk some dogs at the shelter. Like I really want to start dedicating more time and doing that and working with rescues too. So, you know, if a rescue, if someone's adopted, like they can come to me and get their first bandana or something like that at a discount and kind of go from there and see what I can do with that. Sounds like you're getting into the event planning too, which is really neat. Cause I can imagine the kind of event you're planning where it's all could even be like other small business owners that are related to dog stuff like that. That would yeah. just be so cute. That'd be so cool. Um, and I know there's plenty, you know, some I've even interviewed on virtual coffee, but plenty of small businesses dedicated to, to dog apparel products, et cetera. Yeah. So that's neat. I, I, actually, I like that. I took a recommendation from you and I reached out to the Rescue Me Candle Co. Oh, nice. I love her. I was going to say, I was going to mention her to you. Yeah, exactly. Like people like that and even, you know, Bros Brew, who who we mentioned, you know, gives back to, to some of that. Yeah, it's cool. I, I like that. I like where you're going with it. Thank you. Oh, I wanted to ask you if for other business owners who are listening in, do you recommend Etsy like just starting out? We don't have to get like too detailed, but just curious if that's something that you felt was a good platform at first. And it sounds like some people, once they get more established, move off of it, um, which makes yeah. sense. But any like advice there to others? I would say Etsy is a great place to start for mm -hmm. anyone really, because you're always going to have that market of people always searching for something looking for a gift or anything like that like there has been plenty of times myself included where I've been like oh I don't know what to get you know my best friend for her birthday who has everything go on Etsy and I'll find something unique and cool and that's something else is especially you know after COVID everyone was all on board shop small and I think Etsy is a great platform to start because you gain that audience you you know you pop up in related searches and it's just like people find you um, I will say there is a moment where you will outgrow it and I think I'll always keep like a few listings on Etsy just to like keep that audience there but as far as like some of the fees go they may not work for you as far as like maybe wanting to take it full-time the marketing you have to pay for and stuff like that but like I said earlier, like the shipping, I get a discount when I ship through Etsy instead of just going straight to the post office. So there's like, like I said, there there's perks and it's a great place to start to gain your audience. But you will, I mean, I, it'll to each their own too. Like you may mm -hmm. outgrow it and it may work for you full time. I know there's some Etsy shops that have been open for years and they make over two hundred thousand dollars on Etsy. Yeah. So yeah. why why would you stop? You know. So. I think it's a great place to begin and then evaluate as you go. Right, right. Yeah, it sounds like uh, watching out for that moment where you might consider going external to Etsy, um, but then considering, well, do you want to build your own website? Like, do you have that skill set or funds to hire someone? Um, what does yeah. that path look like? And yeah, just being mindful of, to your point, just evaluating along the way and being mindful of when you might want to leave or commit, commit to the yeah. website too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's helpful. I like that. When you took Positivity Designs full time or even just started launching it, working with it, was it hard to work for yourself or did you find that fairly easy? This kind of comes from wondering how you balance work, life, friends, family, you know, how do you not work on the business 24 seven or are there days where you're like, wow, I really should have done more. Like, I know I feel like that often with the podcast. Some days on the weekend, I'm like, should have done more with the podcast. You know, I should have posted something. What was that like? Prior to being full-time with Positivity, I was already working at home um, okay. part-time for the company in Manhattan. Not because of COVID. This was like pre-COVID, but they were just moving offices. So it was just easier for me to be home. Mm -hmm. So I kind of already had that working from home life structured for myself, like with my own schedule. So I'd wake up, eat breakfast and then dive into work. And, you know, then I would take my a regular lunch break. I would completely walk away from the computer 
and then come back. But I will say as some time went on, I got a little nice to myself and (laughs) gave myself more time to do other, I would say, meaningless things because most of it was watching a show or, you know, scrolling on social media. But I would say also, I mean, with COVID too, for a while I wasn't getting sales. And I mean, this was the beginning of COVID and everyone was freaking out. And I was like, okay, well, I got, I just got to keep going. And then, you know, everyone was home. So now we all had this time and, you know, to take some time away from, Mm -hmm. you know, my family driving me crazy. I did. (laughs) I just dove into work, but then I feel like in the last year or so I have found like the good balance of, I don't answer messages before 7 a.m. or after Mm -hmm. 6 p.m. because I needed that boundary, especially with my customers. I'm happy to answer questions and, you know, help you out, but I need to eat dinner with my family. I need to be present in my life. And if I'm constantly answering messages, I don't think I would have a good connection like I do now with my family. But I would also say like, like you said, there are days where I'm like, oh, I should have done more. I should have posted yeah. more. So I try and stick on like, uh, not a strict scheduling post, but I try and like have, okay, three today, two tomorrow, this, mm-hmm. that. I try and plan the week out a little bit ahead of time. So, cause life is life and things will happen. So I have like something to work with. Like, okay, I had this plan today, but I have to go get my car inspected. So instead of, you know, spending all this time on this, when I'm waiting while they're inspecting my car, I'll post something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I won't get too hard on myself if I miss like a time frame I wanted to post. Because also social media changes so much every day too, that mm-hmm. the algorithms don't work like they used to. So you kind of can post whenever and people are still going to see it. But I think making that boundary of, you know, like me, I don't answer before seven or after six, like has helped so much. And I think people understand too, like I will get back to you. It's just not going to be at one o'clock in the morning when you're messaging me about (laughs) a question you have on Mm -hmm. an order. So I think that that has been really important, especially for like my mental health too. Like I don't want to be to the point where I'm so over obsessed or just like beat from doing this all day. Cause I do, I have other interests and stuff I like doing outside of positivity. So I think just setting that boundary and finding what works for you. Cause what works for me might not work for someone else. Mm Mm-hmm. But also I would say to finding just a space. So like my office, everyone knows like, don't go in there. Mm-hmm. And so while I'm working, you know, if they have a question, they can come in and be like, Hey, like, you know, this, that, but other than that, if I'm in my office, don't talk to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of great advice in there. It sounds like it does just take a while to find the routine and almost like the groove that works for you, especially when it's something new, like you are working for yourself, you are running your own business and then setting those boundaries of whether it's a physical space or time or yeah, boundaries of when you do certain things. What I'm hearing is kind of find the routine and the habits that work for you. And it might take a little bit to, to discover those, or maybe they change, you know, based on the season, based on the year, based on what's going on in your life. But just being mindful of what works best best for you and maybe experimenting kind of along the way to figure it out. Yeah, I would say owning your own business is a lot of trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll find that along the way. But like I said it might not work for you, but it could work for someone else. And you just have to keep going until you find what works for yourself. That's why I think it's helpful too to hear folks like you, like your stories and your your advice because Maybe you just said something that someone who is running their own business is like, oh, I've never tried that. Like, let me give it a go and and see if it works for me. Kind of that trial and error experimentation mindset. Yeah. Um, wonderful. Well, Taylor, the the last question I ask all of my guests and, and every episode with is, in this moment, what is your proudest accomplishment? And it can be related to your business or something completely different. Just kind of that first thing that comes to mind. What is your proudest accomplishment so far? I would say my proudest accomplishment is landing 
being able to plan wolf stock. I have been talking about planning like my own doggy event for over a year, I know, but I just never had the means or the opportunity or the relationships to do so. And so over the last year, I have been building those relationships and bringing my customers to the brewery that I'm doing it at and just setting up for what my event is going to be. And that I get to work with rescues and help like they're bringing puppies to my event so like people get to see the dogs that they're gonna bring home and those dogs get some socialization outside of just the shelter so I think the planning and how I envision everything going day of I'm so proud of that because it's something I've just been working towards you know, this whole time. And I, I feel like in the back of my head, I've always wanted to do something in that realm. And just the fact that it's happening, it's like, to me, it's like, I can do this. And this is mm-hmm. what I am doing. And because there has been like, a lot of self doubt, not recently, but I would say, you know, COVID was really hard to get through. And life is life, you have bills to pay and stuff too. So it was a lot of you know, comparing in my head, well, should I keep doing this? Should I, you know, kind of make it the side thing again? And just going back and forth. But right now in this place, I know this is where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I'm just very proud of myself for getting to this point. Yeah, congratulations on on everything you've accomplished so far. And can you shout out when, when Wolfstock is again and where it is? Yes, so it is August 13th at Deep River Brewing Company in Clayton from 12 to 5. And then also after Wolfstock, there's no set dates for these yet, but there's going to be an event called Pints and Pooches. <laughs> and it'll be one one day of the month, a rescue will come into the brewery and be able to showcase all the dogs that need adopting or fostering um, and just be able to make a relationship with those rescues as well so and I'll be there with my table setting up too so look out for that yeah that's awesome yeah and I hope everyone who is is local is taking down those details and you all can can meet Taylor in person (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for for being on Virtual Coffee and sharing your story, your advice, your perspectives. And before we officially sign off, where can people find you in Positivity Designs website, Instagram, social media? Shout everything out. Easiest way to find everything is through Instagram at Positivity Designs, and pretty much all the other handles are that too. But you can everything is linked in our bio and. Um, the event info is also mainly on Instagram. There's going to be a lot of previews of the raffle baskets and goodie bags and stuff this week. I have a I have a hard week coming up, so <laughs> um, just keep an eye out for all that. And I would say actually recently we've been growing on Facebook too, so you can find us there, Positivity.Designs as well. Nice. Excellent. Well, again, thank you so much, Taylor. And I hope everyone checks you and Positivity Designs out. Um, And thank you again so much for, for being on the show. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It was so much fun. 